can I go back to um, almost the very beginning of, of your career again? Because we did speak about that before. But um, obviously, in bits and pieces, we picked up on a few things. I'd just like to go back and maybe fill in a bit of the detail from that, if that's possible. Um, I, mean, I didn't really have time to talk about um, what might be an interesting time. But, but your first two years in, in Paris, uh, when you first went, which was probably in about 1968, I would think, when you first went there to begin uh, learning to perform or to perform. Mm -hmm. um, from what I can gather, there was two years before you had a record release. So we Roughly, had a, yes. a two-year period when mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. Um, apart from the fact you told me that you did a bit of or a lot of um, learning with um, professional uh, opera singers. Yeah, yeah. Um, so eight, that eight hours a day. Yeah. And <laughs> so what I'm interested in is is how that was organised. Was that a, an established course that I, mean, we don't, I don't even know no, the name no, not at all. of the guy that took you. I mean, no, we, we no, said no. It was a guy we didn't give a can we say what his name is? The guy that took you from um, Arles to Paris? Oh, is he's, he well he is, is, is a, a very old man today because he's, uh, I think he must be 83 now. He's still alive. And uh, his name is Jean Perrier. And um, he has uh, trained me as a boxer. Right. You know, because he, 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 th he thinks that um, a voice is uh, first before being the uh, and um, being yourself. It's a muscle. So he wanted to be to give me strength, yes. not to sing loud, but to sing safe in any way. And he was right because until now, mm. I had no no trouble with my voice in all all types of. Uh, places with good sounds, bad sounds, good microphone, bad microphones, one musician, thousand musicians. I mean, it, I have my voice has all been, always been safe. So I mean, thanks Monsieur Perrier because uh, eight eight hours a day was quite a lot for a, a lady of sixteen. Yeah. But um, now I I can um, realize how precious that period was for me just to save my voice and just to uh, help me to manage in all kinds of um, uh, possibilities and, and, and cases and um, he still is alive he still he is still alive and uh, when I go in the south and I pass in front of his house and if I stop he is always pleased to receive me but the first thing he does is, hey, come on, go to the piano and we will make the astuccio. And the astuccio is, is the training of the voice, just to know if your voice has moved. And he is always, always anxious about that. Has the voice moved or not? And after half an hour, he says, okay, you can go. Has moved. So he's happy. Um, so was that something that he did quite a lot, which was to take... Um, aspiring or young talent and develop it, or was it a, a bit of a one-off that he found you down there in, in all for me? Or it was, was it something it, he that was he... on vacation? Yeah. So he it... didn't expect. It was. It was just looking at the arena and at the, the monuments and take a night, taking a nice yeah. uh, night times in the in in in, in Le Fondier, and he was visiting. Um, and um, well, I was performing with my friends in the arena, and uh, he heard that voice and said, "Interesting voice. She must be a singer." So he went in the arena and uh, asked for my parents, and they discussed. And he said, "You have to leave her go to Paris because she is made for that." And it had to be Paris because that was where that was. Yes, everything happens in Paris, of to course, there. especially when you start. After you can take the luxury of living outside, but at the beginning you have to be in Paris. I mean, everything 
happens in Paris, all the musicals, all the record companies, all the theatres, all the, the, the announcers, all the press people, or medias, everybody is in Paris. So even if you say Marseille is important, well, start in Paris and then you can go to live in Marseille. But first, Paris is, is, is an well, obligation. Yeah. So for those two years, it was pretty much, um, like you say, training up yeah. in a style of a boxer for a big fight maybe, mm -hmm. over a longer period. That's it. And did you do any professional performing? Yes, because he was himself performing in opera. Right. And uh, sometimes they gave concerts, you know, with, 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 with uh, excerpts of opera singers, or of opera parts. And there were several opera singers in the same time. And I was the only young lady to be allowed to sing in, in the middle of those extraordinary professional opera singers. They loved me like their daughter. And they brought me all over the concerts just for me to get experience with the audience. And it was important for me because, um, you know, when you go to opera singer concert, you don't expect to find um, a normal, let's say, traditional variety singer. And, um, but I was, I was carried by all these people and they helped me a lot and to be appreciated by the audience because they introduced me like, uh, how can I say? Yes, a, a bit like their daughter. Even knowing that I would never be an opera singer, they would have expected me to become an opera singer, but I was too lazy. Right. <laughs> well, eight hours a day for yeah. so many years. Absolutely. No, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. So, you had, I think, your first record released in 1970. Mm -hmm. um, was that on um, CBS? Were you signed to a major label at that time? It was, was it, it was a CBS label. It was yeah. Epic. 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 Yeah. So and it was Epic was starting at that time in, in France as the um, uh, uh, part of CBS, yeah. and they had no uh, they had no stars to promote at that time. So they all gamble on me. So I was the, the major artist of Epic at that time. Yeah. You are not wrong because I, I, I've carried a lot of artists after me. Yeah. So that was the deal that lasted for the next four years, mm -hmm. as far as recording goes. Mm -hmm. So this record comes out in 1970, which you might have to remind... 70, the first one was in the 70... The very first one. With the end, of 70, end of 71. With the shoes on the cover. Uh, no, this was in Barclays. Right. But it, it has never been uh, on the market. No, never released? No, 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 no. No, it has been released for a, just a very limited series. Yeah. So, for those who have it, it's a... And why, why was that? Was it just a little um, test release or something? It, has it was a joke at the beginning. Ah. When we did